Wednesday, little friends and storytime parents. Welcome to another storytime session with your friendly library tech, Miss Tiffany, at your MWR Community Library. Today, I picked some of my favorite books to read to you. So let's begin. My first book is a mystery book. How fun. And this is Dirk Bones and the Mystery of the Missing Books. Here we go. This is by Doug Cushman. Friends ready? Here we go. Knock, knock. The door creaked open. Hello, I said. I am Dirk Bones, a reporter for the newspaper, The Ghostly Tunes. I am here to write a story about Edgar Bleak, the author of spooky books. That's me, said Edgar. Please come inside. My readers would like to know where you get your ideas for your stories, I said. The town of Ghostly is very spooky said Edgar. It gives me a lot to write about. Do you have a new book? I asked. Yes, said Edgar. Let me show it to you. I have the only copy until it is in the bookstores. We walked into his writing room. Edgar looked on his desk. It's not here, he said. Maybe I misplaced it. I hope you look for it, I said. We looked in closets and cupboards, in the bookcase and the bathtub, but no book. Oh dear, Edgar said. Do you think my book was stolen? Maybe, I said. I spied a wet leaf on the floor next to the open window. This is a strange leaf, I said. It might be a clue to the missing book. Maybe I can find a picture of it in a book at the library. At the ghostly town library, I looked through 36 books of plants and leaves but I did not find one picture of a strange leaf. What brings you here, Dirk? Said Miss Elsa, the librarian. A mystery, I said. I have a mystery too, she said. Someone has been stealing books from the library. What kind of books have been stolen, I asked. It's very odd, said Elsa. Only books by Edgar Bleak. Mr. Bleak has a book missing from his house tonight, I said. Could someone have taken all the books? I also found this, Elsa said. It was next to the bookshelf. She held up the leaf, just like the one I found. These leaves are an important clue, I said. Maybe the bookstore has, plant, has books about plants. I must solve this mystery. The bookstore was on the other side of town. I took a shortcut through the green lagoon. I walked through the tall wet grass. Something moved in the water. I turned. A dark dripping shape climbed out of the lagoon. It moved closer and closer. Ah, choo! Bless you, Darlene, I said. My home is so wet, said Darlene. I always get the sniffles. What are you doing here, Dirk? Trying to solve a mystery. I said. Some books are missing. I have not seen any books, Darlene said. But lately I hear strange voices. They sound like voices. Have you ever seen a leaf like this? I asked. But Darlene did not answer. Yikes! She cried. She jumped back in the lagoon. I turned to see a huge vine rise out of the tall grass. The vine was covered with a strange leaf that. There it is. The vine slithered like a big snake into the town of Ghostly. I ran after it. It wriggled into the bookstore, grabbed a book, and slithered back to the lagoon. It was very fast. The vine disappeared. I looked all around, but the tall grass hid everything. Just then, I heard a sound. It sounded like a voice. I followed the noise. I pushed aside a leafy bush and saw a plant holding a book. It was reading the book. The plant turned. Eek! It said. You scared me. You scared me, I said. Who are you? Lenore, said the plant. I'm a very rare creepus crawler talkus vine. Where do you come from? I asked. When I was a little seed, the wind blew me from that faraway mountain, Lenore said. I planted myself here. 
It's cool and wet. Perfect for my roots and leaves. Why are you stealing books by Edgar Bleak? I asked. I just borrowed them, said Lenore. I promise to give them back after I read them to my children. Mr. Bleak is their favorite author. Your children? I asked. I looked down. Five little flowers popped up. We love spooky stories, they said. This gives me an idea for a story for my newspaper, I said. The next day, the front page read, Reporter gets library card for plant. Now my kids will always have spooky stories, said Lenore. The library is the best place for budding readers, said Edgar. Even budding flowers, I said. The end. Yay! Alright friends, let's read my next book. And this is called Put It On The List by Kristen Darbyshire. Here we go. No more cereal? Mom says, put it on the list. So if you look at the list, the groceries, it has lima beans, peanut butter, and zucchini. But we always forget, and we run out of... Orange juice, shampoo, bananas, baby food, baby carrots, zucchini, gas shaving cream, paper towels, tea bags, yogurt, lettuce, tissues, printer paper, tomatoes, soap, bread, tuna fish, broccoli, light bulbs, chocolate ice cream, and everything else. On Monday, we had pancakes, but no syrup. More ketchup? Ooh. On Tuesday, we had toothbrushes, no toothpaste. Mom, chickens don't have teeth. On Wednesday, we had cookies, no milk. Glass of water. On Thursday, Mom took a trip to the store. She got toothpaste syrup, zucchini, and milk, but no cereal. Cereal? I just went to the store. On Friday, we had lima beans, no napkins. I don't know where to hide them. Then Saturday, was a day that mom flipped out. It was boo boo, no band aid, wet baby, no diaper, macaroni, no cheese, peanut butter, no jelly. I don't even want to talk about the toilet paper. Mom! Who's ready for peanut butter and pickle grub on macaroni casserole? Mmm. So Sunday was a new day. We made some new plans. To start with, no more pickled grub. We use the grocery list all the time. We help with shopping. And in case of emergency, we call for pizza. The end. What a silly story. I think that's all of us. We all need to put all our items on our grocery list. All right, friends. So let's read our last book of the day. And this is a Caldecott Medal Award winning book. And this is a sick day for Amos McGee. And this is written by Philip Steed. Here we go. Amos McGee was an early riser. Every morning, when the alarm clock clanged, he swung his legs out of bed and swapped his pajamas for a fresh pressed uniform. He would wind his watch and set a pot of water to boil. 
saying to the sugar bowl, a spoonful for my oatmeal, please, and two for my teacup. Belly full and ready for the workday, he ambled out of the door. Every day, Amos waited for the number five bus. Next stop, City Zoo. The bus driver would call, 6 a.m. Right on time, he replied. Amos had a lot to do with the zoo, but he always made time to visit his good friends. He would play chess with the elephant, who thought and thought before making a move. Run races with the tortoise, who never, ever lost. Sit quietly with the penguin, who was very shy. Lend a handkerchief to the rhinoceros, who always had a runny nose. And at sunset, read stories to the owl, who was afraid of the dark. One day, Amos woke up with the sniffles and the sneezes and the chills. He swung his achy legs out of bed, curled them back again, and said, Ugh, I don't think I'll be going to work today. Meanwhile, at the zoo, the animals waited for their friend. The elephants arranged his pawns and polished his castles. The tortoise stretched his legs and limbered up. The penguin sat patiently all by himself. The rhinoceros worried that his allergies were worsening. The owl perched atop a tall stack of storybooks, scratching his head with concern. Where is Amos? The animals wondered. Later that day, what are they doing? They're all in line and they're waiting at the bus stop. Hmm, I wonder where they're going. Do you know? So, they're on the number five bus. Where do you think all the animals are going? Let's find out. <gasps> Hooray! My good friends are here! The elephant prepared a game of chess. Amos thought and thought before making a move. I'm too tired to run races today, said Amos to the tortoise. Let's play hide and seek instead. The tortoise hid inside his shell. Amos hid beneath the covers. Amos yawned. Oh, I could use a nap. The penguin sat quietly, keeping Amos's feet warm. Achoo! Amos awoke with a sneeze. The rhinoceros was ready with a handkerchief. I'm beginning to feel much better, thank you, said Amos to his friends. He swung his legs out of bed. Perhaps we'll share a pot of tea. Amos wound his alarm clock. It's getting late, he said. After all, we have a morning bus to catch. So Amos said goodnight to the elephant, and goodnight to the tortoise, and goodnight to the penguin, and goodnight to the rhinoceros, and goodnight to the owl who knowing that Amos was afraid of the dark, read a story aloud before turning out the light. And they all went to sleep. The end. Thank you for sharing this special time with me. I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye-bye.